Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Good morning, everybody. It's Anita Finley, and I'm going to have a great guest on today. Of course, that's Darwin Porter. We know he's calling in from Staten Island. Good morning, Darwin. Good morning, Anita. The uh, My home is quiet uh, uh, at the moment. All the vampires are asleep, and they're not really vampires. They were. <laughs> they just finished shooting a film last night about Spanish uh, vampire ballerinas. I've seen a lot of uh, vampire movies, but I've never seen one about Spanish vampire ballerinas, but uh, the film concluded and they're all asleep now. <laughs> uh, it sounds like I'm I'm making this up. <laughs> but your home is a perfect place for something like that. Yeah, for vampires. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> but vampires, ballerinas, I can't believe it. Uh, Anita, I want to do something sort of light today because um, uh, I just uh, picked up the uh, morning edition of the New York Times and every single... Uh, Headline is a disaster in the world. You know the know. Himalayas. Oh, the gosh. ice and snow is melting in the Himalayas and will threaten the water supply of millions. And Mozambique is flooded, and two million people have uh, lost their homes and are starving to death. And cholera. I mean, it just is one thing after another. So wait, I wait. To before do you get bit. off that, and then I noticed that there's this huge glacier, huge glacier. That if it if it drops and they're thinking it's going to drop, it's size of Florida. Oh my God! Oh yeah! In fact, I'm going to do more a cover story. That, more than to think the Titanic, right? Oh wow! You know, you're so right. It's like we are really in having some serious problems, Darwin. Yeah. So, but this I want to do just fun stuff. Okay, good. Okay. I need the fun. Right. I want to tell you about. A quiz show that I appeared on um, in 1971. It w- went off the air in San Francisco after one month. It was called Who Did What to Whom? And I was asked a series of questions that no one had ever been asked before on television and I don't think will ever be asked again. Okay. Um, <laughs> I knew a producer. I was working. I did from San Francisco and my TV office had a, a headquarters in San Francisco. So I visited the city constantly. And he asked me to go on this show. And since I was doing all these travel books, he said, one of the categories is geography. So you'll be good at that. Uh-huh. Well, I went on the show, and they'd removed the geography. <laughs> so they said, you can select two. So I selected my two favorite other subjects, movie stars and politicians. Okay. It was a very <laughs> low-budget show. You only got $100. If you answered the question, you could keep going. But if you missed one of the 12 questions... You lost everything. As I said, it was low budget. So (laughs) the first question was, who were the previous tenants of 10050 Cielo Drive before it became the most infamous address in Hollywood? And I knew the answer. I said, first tenant, Cary Grant. (laughs) Second tenant, Henry Fonda. Third tenant, Candice Bergen and her boyfriend, Terry Melcher, who was also famous because he was the son of Doris Day. And, of course, that address uh, later then, after Terry and Candace moved out, was taken over by Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate. And the Charles Manson gang, uh, gang murdered them. That address is coming back this week in uh, The Haunting of Sharon Tate is opening in theaters across the country. Hilary Duff is playing the pregnant Sharon Tate. And uh, uh, th- that whole guest, th- the story in the film is different because before it's been from the point of view of the Charles Manson gang. But this story that is in the film coming out will be from the point of view of the murdered pregnant Sharon Tate. So that was the first question. The only thing that surprised me is that both Cary Grant and Henry Fonda live there in that house. Oh, this, this, I thought we we're going to do something happy. Well, <laughs> uh, well, 
Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up on the second one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. What famous actor disappointed his mother who wanted a girl? She dressed her son in girl's clothing until he went to school and gave her son a girl's name. Of course, that was easy for me. I said, John Wayne. Correct. I didn't know that. And she named <clears throat> him Marion, M-A-R-I, a girl's oh, name. Oh, my Marian. gosh. I don't remember that. Yes. Well, anyway, so they said, now you've won $200. Do you want to go for $300? And I felt on a roll, so I said, Give, hit it to me. Talk it to me. <laughs> okay. And she, and she said, the question was, what young male telephone operator in Buenos Aires had an affair with the co-dictator of Argentina, Evita Perón? Of course, that was a cakewalk for me. I said, Aristotle Onassis. Now, oh my a lot heavens. of people, a lot of people didn't know that. But when he was a young man, Aristotle Onassis was in. He, uh, he also so, spoke uh, Spanish. He was in uh, a telephone operator, and he listened in on private business deals. And he made several investments, and that was the beginning of his fortune. And of course, Evita discovered him and quote audition. Aristotle, long before Maria Callas and Jacqueline Kennedy got him, Avita got him. Okay. I Darwin, was. wait a minute, Darwin. Your brain is just, you are a museum. You are absolutely amazing that you would know oh, these kinds of things. Yeah. The, the fourth question, of course, I stood to lose the big bonus of $300. What young Latino came to Hollywood to replace Fernando Lamas and Ricardo Montalban as the screen's leading Latin lover. Aha! <laughs> I got it. The answer um, was Fidel Castro. No, wait a minute. Are you drunk now or this real? Well, I think the vampires sucked too much of my blood. <laughs> <last night. laughs> oh, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. Say, do that question again. That's amazing. What young Latino came to Hollywood to replace Fernando Lamas and Ricardo Montalban as the screen's leading Latin lover? Oh, my now, gosh. If, if Hollywood had given Fidel Castro the roles, they may never have been all the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so they said... Mr. Porter, do you want to continue with the fifth question? You've won $400. And I said, sock it to me. <laughs> and they said, Marilyn Monroe seduced four men with the same last name. Who were those men? Ah, I knew that. I said, Joseph Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, and Ted Kennedy. Oh, uh, my. And at that time, people don't, uh, yeah, at that time, people, people didn't know that. No, they didn't. But a lot of people even today didn't know about Joseph Kennedy because, John, he was a friend. You know, Joseph Kennedy was in the movie business, uh, and he was the uh, friend of John Houston. And he Houston introduced him to Marilyn Monroe in 1950 when they were making, uh, she was making The Asphalt Jungle one of her first leading roles before she did All About Eve. And so Joseph Kennedy got to Maryland before his sons did. did so so <laughs> did his sons know that their father did that? Yes. Really? Oh, yeah. they, they shared women, you know. <laughs> uh, it's in 25 books. But anyway, I knew the answer because, you know, I view Marilyn Monroe as one of my expert, one of my subjects of expertise. Okay, Porter, do you want to go ahead with the sixth question? I think they were, they'd already lost five hundred dollars on me. And I said, <laughs> right. I, now, so they get, they threw in a a question to trick me. They said, "Who took the virginity of Thelma Ryan?" Now. I knew who Thelma Ryan was. And here was the trick. Thelma Ryan was the second most famous woman in America in 1971. She, um, 
she led in a poll. I think Jackie Kennedy was voted the number one most famous, and Thelma was the number two. I'm sure you know a lot about her. Anyway, I answered, the actor Robert Taylor took her virginity. Now, Thelma, why it was a trick question, Thelma was better known as Mrs. Patricia Nixon. Uh, she, was, <laughs> <laughs> she was the, see, they tried to trick me. She was the f- f- first um, lady of the land, and um, she had she wanted to be a movie star at really? Thelma Ryan. And she worked on Small Town Girl in 1936 with Robert Taylor. You and I once did a show on Bibi Raboso. Oh, yeah, I remember that, that Key Biscayne guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Key Biscayne. He was Nixon's best friend. And, right. And I, I knew Bibi for years, and he told me once Nixon got really mad at Pat Nixon, and he said, I married you, you were used goods. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, poor Pat. So they said, okay, question number seven will be political. And they said, what 19th century American president wanted to round up all African Americans and ship them back to Africa? Very provocative. But I knew the answer. I said, Abraham Lincoln. And they said, yes. You know, it's a little known fact of history that Abraham Lincoln, who, quote, freed the slaves, wanted to send them back. And, of course, his ministers talked him out of it. But I considered that somewhat of a trick question. Well, (laughs) wait a minute. That's really big news when you said that. I don't think any of us knew that. Yeah, but just look in the history books, 50 history books. And, you see, that's what I mean. The questions were getting a little harder, you know. But I decided to go for an eighth one. $800. That was a lot at that time, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, as I said, it was still a low budget show. They should give me a thousand dollars a question. <laughs> right. And the question was also, this was very difficult. During the heyday of MGM, the studio operated a bordello across the street from its entrance. Plastic surgeons worked on the girls to make them look like famous movie stars. No. What girl? What girl? was the most requested prostitute. I mean, meaning, who who did she look like? And I said, Ava Gardner. And they said, correct! <laughs> Ava Gardner. Now, see, that that's, you know, Darwin, you're, you're an amazing man. I These things, but wait, let me stop and ask you one more question. So, how did they know all these things? I mean, those were just... People, they had researchers. They had researchers. My goodness. Yeah, they, I talked to. There was a, a, a woman, an old Hollywood. Uh, I don't mean to say she's old today. Old to me is a hundred. That's true. <laughs> to me too. But she had worked in. Uh, she had worked in Hollywood, and, and and actually she had worked for MGM, and she'd worked for Fox. So she she. It was stump the stars. Except I wasn't a star, but it was stump the stars. Now, the other question, I went for the ninth one, and they said, um, political, at the end of World War II in 1945, which country did Harry S. Truman fear the most uh, out of fear they were going to um, assert imperialistic ambitions? Now, I think most people would have said the Soviet Union, but I, I knew Truman. You know, I knew that from my days in Key West when he came down. And I said, England. Really? And they said, correct. England? Most, well, he, uh, Mr. Truman, and I heard him talk about this one time in Key West, he was afraid England would start to reassert its imperial, you know, they went, they had an empire. Yep. And, yep. But, but he, most people, I think, would have said this. And of course, it turned out Truman was wrong. As the world knows, it was the Soviet Union. Now, the other was, I think they wanted me to lose the $900. So (laughs) we're talking like a fortune here. Uh, They wanted, this was a question that it was only by coincidence that I knew the answer to this question. I don't think many people would ever know this question. 
They said, which female Hollywood screenwriter had affairs with four of the world's greatest stars, Greta Garbo, Marlena Dietrich, Isadora Duncan, and Eleanor Doucet. I knew the answer. I, I knew this one. I said, Mercedes de Acosta. Correct. Who would now, have even known? I don't have no, I have no idea of that name. Yeah, you know, she was, uh, in fact, I had, I wrote a novel once called Marika, and I used Mercedes. She was the most fascinating woman. She was a great Spanish beauty in her day. And she wrote films for Garbo, none ever produced. And uh, I used her as a character in this book. Oh. I'll just give you a quick, a quick line. The first time I met her, I had just been from Spain. And now you talk about a name-dropping line. She said, I just, when I first went to Spain, I drove there with Gertrude Stein and Alice B. Tocla. Oh, <laughs> well, amazing so, names. Now, the 11th question, they decided to ease up on me and gave me one I think they knew I would know. Remember, this woman had worked at MGM. Uh, what was Elizabeth Taylor's favorite sandwich? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Uh, believe it or not, she wanted gobs of mayonnaise between two slices of rye bread. <laughs> that's it? Is that right? <laughs> that mayonnaise was, with no, no rye bread? No, <laughs> Two slices, go gobs of mayonnaise between, yeah, yeah, that was her favorite sandwich. <laughs> I have tried it myself. It's not that bad. No, it's. I'm sure it's not bad. It's just, I, I would think I want some tomato, lettuce, or bologna or something. <laughs> yeah, but you're not Elizabeth Taylor. No, you look my. more gorgeous, but you're oh, not. Oh, no, yeah, right, right. Well, that, see, now and these the are, way, no, that when they got you, they really the way, got somebody. You just killed their their bucket, I'll tell you. <laughs> Just uh, on the subject of Elizabeth Taylor, yesterday, uh, I don't know how the subject came up, but one of the actors asked me if I had ever heard of Elizabeth Taylor. No way. Oh, now, no. I've been asked if oh. I've ever, I told you, oh. I've, been, I've been asked if I've ever heard of Ronald Reagan. And, oh, no. Well, see, these are generation. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, I wrote a biography of Elizabeth Taylor. Of course, Taylor, right? of course. Now, I thought the third question, uh, the twelfth question, which would be the last question, would be the hardest of all. Actually, it wasn't. But they said, who was the richest woman Elvis Presley ever seduced? All right. Now, my answer was the tobacco heiress Doris Duke. Really? And they said, correct, you're the all-time winner. Now, you wouldn't think of Elvis Presley was known. Of course, you knew who Doris Duke was. Uh, yes, yes. Duke University. How did he meet her? Uh, he, Well, she uh, went to one of his concerts oh, the backstage. And, that did it. I mean, yeah. you have to realize she was the richest woman in the world. She was richer than Barbara Hutton, uh. the Woolworth heiress. And... Uh, you know, I, I've, someone offered me a contract at Princess Hall, and I'd never got to do it. They wanted me to write a double biography of Doris Duke and Barbara Hutton, you know, and the title was The Two Women Who Bought and Sold Men. <laughs> uh, uh, was it ever written, anything like that? No, no. Well, I, that's I, another I book, you know. I think that'd be a very exciting book. Of course, you and I and the wonderful people listening to us are probably the only people in the world today who know who Doris Duke and Barbara Hutton were, you know. So anyway, I walked off with the $1,200. Oh, wow. Now, what had you, you've, I'm sure you must have watched some question and answer game shows. Oh, I have. Yes, I have. Yes. Have you ever heard of such questions? No. As they, no, you know? no. Well, they, they, did, they didn't know really, I guess. How smart you were that. How did they pick you? Why did they pick you? I forgot what you told well, me. Well, I'd known this producer, and besides, he picked me because one of the categories was geography. Oh, geography! <laughs> I mean, he did, well, you know, I'd written all those travel books. Right. I traveled around right. the world. I mean, it would right. be natural. And for some reason, maybe he advised them in advance, 
to re- but that was one of their categories. And then when I walked in and sat down, that little slot went down and it rose uh, politicians. Now he didn't know that I am a political junkie. I, I, he never. I think he knew that I knew movie stars, but he didn't know that my sideline, like that Abraham Lincoln. I think. Oh yeah, that's was unbelievable. A, a trick question because I think most. African Americans today, and Lincoln did free the slaves, but there's that stock of, but you know, history is very, very strange, isn't it? <laughs> I was thinking, and when I was thinking about his mind, maybe what he thought it would then, people wouldn't be suffering here, he could just get rid of all of them to a place where they'd be happy. I mean, why else would he do that? Well, I think, I, I don't think it was a vicious thing. Right, right. In, in other words, he, I think from what I've read, he viewed it as these people should be returned to their culture, their land. Yeah, I agree and, with you. Uh-huh. And so I don't think it was some cruel um, – he was certainly not a cruel uh, no. president. Right. But it's, it's just one of those obscure uh, oh, facts of, of Absolutely. Of uh, I have to tell you what would be fun. I don't know if you want to do it. Maybe a column like that would be fun. It was this was fabulous, absolutely oh, fabulous. I'm afraid it would be too controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't care on everything get, with all, all the things you said. Or I mean, I think it would be fun, don't you? I would get, I would get death threats. Well, I, you get I, death uh, threats. I don't know. Oh, I have to think about it okay. because uh, I, I'm so. You know, Joe Biden has taught today is. People are so ultra sensitive, and oh, I they know. Can take uh, offense at the. I'm I'm very very careful around people these days because uh, really? I never know. It's a new day we're living in. Yeah. Uh, you, you've been following the Joe Biden. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, and I have to tell you, as a woman who, you know, an older woman, I thought that that was uh, this ridiculous. In my opinion, and you know that I'm. I'm I'm liberal in many ways. I I don't think that's right. I think that they're just they're just all crazy now. It's just ridiculous. Well, you can carry this too far, you know, because right. I think uh he was a hugger kisser. Of course. But, you know, in the 1970s there was nothing but you watch a television show uh Don Rickles, in fact I was seeing an old rerun Don Rickles last night and gave Frank Sinatra Three wet kisses on the mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> of of yeah. course, Frank Sinatra I, wiped I his mouth. But I mean, <laughs> it was the era. Everybody was, and then of course along came AIDS, and it stopped. But you look at those old television shows, yeah. and everyone was hugging and kissing on Johnny Carson. And but now we must not hug and kiss anybody. <laughs> well, see, I've noticed something too. When I'm, I'm a hugger, and you know, I always hug people. But now I do notice. When there's a, a man who I've known and everything is so nice, he kind of just puts his hand out to me to shake it or to, you know, but <laughs> I don't I know. know. It's ridiculous. It's, they say Leonardo DiCaprio enters a party today with six men around him. <laughs> 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 so we're living in perilous uh, times. And he, I think it's time for me to say goodbye. To oh, you. I hate that. Well, maybe in one more minute. Just let's do, let's strange one more minute. Anyway, I want right. to thank you. And I know that you've had fabulous stuff having at your house. And, uh, well, and I'm, I'm yes, sure you'll. And- You'll tell a, me a more. The movie's on the way, and this will be starring an eight-year-old girl, and the house will be turned into a haunted mansion. Oh, is that what's going to happen? And so <laughs> That's the next movie. God, we've had eight movies made here already. <laughs> oh, that's great. I am so... Well, it's a, that kind of a house, actually. It, it really feels like it's a movie anyway when you're in there. <laughs> the movies are returning to Staten Island where they began, you know. Oh, that's right. Well, you're yeah. great, and I... I do thank you so much for your your column that's coming up, of course, in our our um, April issue. And I thank you for taking the time to call in. And I would love and to this, just talk to you on a personal level. Well, this is going to be uh, a big week for me because Kirk Douglas is still alive, and I'm releasing the first autobi- uh, first biography that has ever. 
the only star of the golden age. He was number 17 of the biggest stars of all time, and no one has ever written a biography of him. It's going to be great. So we featured it last be, month on the cover. 103 Amazing. Year. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, honey. Okay. Take care you of yourself. Have a wonderful show. Thank you. We'll Thank talk. you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.